Bonjour à tous. Merci. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. A very big thanks to all of you who have joined us around the world uh, via video conferencing. And I really want to thank you again for joining us. Uh, so I've just had the exact number of people with us. There's 800 people, it's been 183 more precisely. So it's very impressive. We're delighted. So there's a lot we want to say to you today. That's why we decided this event would be a good uh, idea. So, as you've seen, Euronews is not a television channel. What we mean by that is Euronews is much more than that. Now, I'm not being pretentious. It's not something that we uh, really chose. In fact, uh, like all of our competitors, we have to adapt uh, to this industry, the media industry, which is undergoing profound changes and all of the borders and barriers are falling around us. Uh, so what are the challenges then? Uh, according to us, the key challenge is the user experience. Uh, now the consumer, and we need to call them consumer, uh, wants to tell their own story. In fact, uh, although sometimes uh, he doesn't really know exactly what he wants to say. And so we've moved on. It used to be a supply marketing situation. Now, supply marketing was the good old times where you're doing broadcasting in the literal sense of the world. Very few media were broadcasting via terrestrial relay uh, to a wide audience. Uh, then uh, we saw narrow casting, where there were more media but broadcasting to smaller communities. Uh, but now we've moved into uh, demand marketing. So this is ego casting. Uh, so it means uh, the content I want, where I want it, when I want it. So how can we uh, survive and thrive in such a world? Well, the answer is quite simple. Uh, we absolutely must transform our organization into a global media hub, with our main asset being our brand. Now, it's not in the marketing sense that I use the word brand, but rather we represent editorial values, uh, a brand that one trusts or not. Uh, and with that transformation, well, the goal then is to provide the right content at the right place at the right time. So the era of the same content everywhere at the same time is over. Also, the era of being the first to know is also over, and CNN has dropped this as its slogan. Uh, so how can Reuters, Associated Press, etc., how can they, even with their incredible resources, how can they rivalize with Soheb Atal? Soheb Atal was uh, that uh, resident of Abbottabad who launched that Twitter on the uh, arrival of the American helicopters over Abbottabad. How can we possibly rival that? So there's this multiplicity of news sources does force us to be more reactive, uh, respond more quickly, but we in particular we have to reinvent our way of working so that we can present and offer customized news. What do we mean by customized? Well, it means the right format and the right environment. It's a question of format, the content, of course with our brand, our umbrella brand, uh, we represent universal values. We must defend that. However, the content needs to be adapted to the different platforms where it is made available. And so that's what we're going to be showing you here today. Now, there are two key messages we want to get across here. First of all, explaining who we are, in particular to our friends around the world who perhaps don't know us as well as the audience here in Paris. Uh, and also to announce all of the new projects we are uh, working on. Uh, 20, we're connected to 20 cities. We'll be announcing 20 projects for our 20th anniversary. We've doubled our staff. We've doubled our budget and our distribution. And we're doing more than just survive. In fact, we've gained market share. We have prestigious advertisers who've joined us. Uh, and as you'll see, we are a leader and a pioneer in a, a number of areas. So as you saw in the video, 
And I'm not going to bore you with too many numbers, but there's uh, five key numbers. First of all, 10 million. 10 million people consume the Euronews brand every single day, which makes Euronews the number one news media in Europe. So number one, that's an easy number to remember. Now the second number is 800. There are 800 people working for Euronews. 400 of them are journalists from over 25 different nationalities. And finally, one more important figure is 100 because we are delighted to announce that in the coming three months, we will be hiring 100 new staff. Now, I don't think anywhere else in the world uh, in a media who is announcing such hiring numbers. Uh, so to give you an idea of some of our new developments, uh, we're trying to keep you entertained here as well while we uh, get across uh, these important points. So. The basic idea is how can we survive and thrive? That is our theme. So we've identified four vital needs, which are human needs as well, which are, according to us, uh, correspond to all media, in fact, have these same needs. And what we understood when we thought about this, in fact, there's a fifth need, uh, which is one which is much more unique, this fifth element. Uh, well, we've called it the, the fifth element, and we've decided to call it the fifth element. Well, no surprise, but I'll explain that to you. So that was a joke. Sorry. Okay, I was told not to tell jokes. Uh, I guess they were right. Uh, so we're going to start with this first need, which is common to the entire media industry, industry, and that is identity. That's what identifies us. It uh, is about our values, our history and the perception of our brand. So how can we stay pertinent then and uh, build a strong identity in that ever-changing media world? Uh, so we found a, a s the, the slogan we thought a great deal about. So Euronews is Europe and news. OK, but the news is worldwide. OK, now that may seem obvious like a choice, but it's not quite so obvious, in fact. So our two main aims, uh, the European Union, uh, the, we have the GGCOM, who is connected here from Brussels. Uh, Euronews was given two main missions. First of all, uh, to uh, build a European perspective of world news uh, to try to break down that uh, Anglo-American hegemony. Now, the second mission, which you probably don't know, is that Eurega News is also here to help uh, build a European identity and a European public space. And now that's quite a complicated task, as you can imagine. Uh, uh, in the U.S., uh, this is probably easier, uh, French-speaking, British-speaking, uh, Europe, a European identity, that's a lot uh, more difficult a task. So, but with those two missions in mind, our identity then is all about our editorial values. So, as you, you saw this a bit in the video, and Euronews is a very different model. Everything is international at Euronews, our shareholdership, the staff, the audience, our customers. Um, we are the only media in the world which is truly multinational, truly multilingual, multicultural, and uh, multinational shareholdership. Uh, so what does this mean? It means that editorial independence and freedom of expression are not a goal we have to work toward every day. It's a reality every single day uh, in the newsroom, all bringing together all of the different perspectives. Uh, one example, do you know that the head of News and Programs uh, is a Romanian, Lucien Saab. Did you know that the editorial committee in, uh, led by uh, Paolo Garimberti, head of the supervisory board, includes uh, public broadcasters of Turkey and Greece. So this is Europe in action in the wide sense of the term, not just uh, Europe from the Atlantic to the Urals, but uh, rather the, from the Atlantic to Afghanistan. 
so in the very broad sense. So, so your news is a European perspective applied to the news around the world. So on this topic, in a world with our competition against CNN, Russia Today, Sky, your news is still a public service. So in a world where one of our biggest competitors that I've just announced, uh, just mentioned, mentions 600 million in net profits. Your news objective is to generate additional resources to continue to invest, invest, invest in the newsroom. And if you look around, we are the only public service in the world where our uh, revenue from our shareholders is below 10 percent of our total income. We are the only public uh, media with 20 shareholders and not a single owner. And Lucien uh, will tell you this. It means we belong to no one. And in contrast to what's going on in other countries, uh, we are very lucky in that our shareholders are proud of us. They are public uh, service broadcasters themselves. Uh, and something that is very, and Remy, I am really. Uh, really touched that you were able to join us here today, and I thank you for all of your support. So identity. There's another aspect of identity, and that is the home. And uh, Euronews, one of our first announcements today, uh, is that we're offering ourselves a new home. We can't fit any longer in our current uh, uh, building in Eculi, the suburb uh, just outside of Lyon. So a new headquarters is being built in the very center of the city of Lyon, and this new building is in the newly developed district of the Confluence. And so we are happy to present you today the design uh, design by world-famed architects Jacob and McFarlane being built by Cardinale with 10,000 square meters and which should be ready by the beginning of 2014 video. So, what is the next important need, which is common to humanity and, of course, media, and that is understanding. The need for understanding is about making sense of our environment, understanding our role, in particular, in Europe and the rest of the world. So, we asked ourselves the question then, how? Do we extend our reach to new markets, platforms, and audiences? So how do we understand our environment now? We are convinced that we can take this much further and not just being a global news media. So we've developed a new strategy. This was asked by our shareholders to develop a new editorial strategy, which we'll be presenting to you here today. The idea is that in a world with such a fragmented uh, audience, being global isn't uh, sufficient uh, anymore. We don't. But on the other hand, we can't be a local station uh, either. Uh, plenty of others are already doing that and they do it very well. We want to become the first global media. What do we mean by global? Uh, to us, it means uh, offering an agenda 
a global agenda while offering a certain number of local tools to reach the local audience. Now, the first element of this is to uh, speak to audiences in their language. We're already doing this, but we can go even further with this. There are other ways we can be closer to our audience. So, for example, first of all, having a program schedule specific to a particular zone or geographic zone. We can also have a different lineup of the news depending on their interests. And we can also adapt with different content. So what the good news here is that we're the only ones who can do it and can do it with very limited budgets without spending tens of millions of euros to create a new channel every time. So the idea to begin with is to distinguish Euronews Europe from Euronews World. And so we're going to continue to work on different rollouts. Uh, for example, Euronews Asia, Euronews Middle East or Africa, for example. And I'd also like to uh, thank the uh, minister who has joined us here. And we will be working with local partners. Uh, that is one of our strengths, is working in partnerships. Uh, some have already joined us, and I uh, would like to welcome any newcomers uh, interested in a partnership to uh, roll out these different uh, projects. And so what are some of the projects, then, that we uh, can announce here today. We are very delighted to announce Euronews Greece, which will start, go on the air in December 2012 for the very first time in Euronews' history, which will be located in a city other than Lyon. So it will be located in Athens. Uh, these are real pictures of the construction going on of the uh, newsroom, 600 square meters, so which will have uh, 40 staff members, which will be producing your news in Greece and be integrating the channel's workflow. We're very proud of this because uh, for the very first time in our history, we're going to be present locally uh, to uh, provide global news. Uh, another important point is that we will be the first round-the-clock rolling news channel in Greek in Greece. Uh, second important announcement, three months late after that, we will be launching Euronews Hungary in March 2013. We will have an office in Budapest where we will have, again, 40 staff members who will join our overall workflow. And this will be our 13th language edition. So beyond those two important announcements, we are also continue to oh, – oops, sorry. I'm going to get in trouble here. I nearly skipped something here. Let me come back. There's another project I need to announce to you, which with TVR, the Romanian television channel, and this CEO is here with us today and who's keeping a close eye on me. So we would are happy to announce that we are uh, moving forward discussions with uh, TVR uh, to launch Euronews in Romania. Now, this is all very new discussions. Uh, and we have to have the approval of our supervisory board, of course. But I do want to thank Claudio, uh, who has authorized me to announce that we're moving uh, in the direction of opening the Romanian language. And now we've opened a lot of uh, news desks or bureaus around the world. And now in Athens and Budapest, as I mentioned, but there will be other new bureaus, uh, Washington and Stefan is with us. I think it's 4 a.m. in Washington. Uh, uh, Stefan, that's him down at the bottom there, bottom right. Uh, so that's Washington, D.C. Now, uh, Dubai and Istanbul bureaus with TRT, the uh, Turkish uh, national uh, broadcaster, and we welcome them. So, Gregory. So, let's talk about programs now. Uh, we have a very rich lineup of programs, and we're launching more. We're developing our learning world. There's a new season with the WISE Foundation. Musica will be continuing with Rolex as our partner there. Uh, business Market. And our Life magazine is about history and culture 
uh, of a different, with a focus on different countries. We had Russian Life, for example, which was done with the Russian Federation, so uh, Ukraine Life, etc. Another exclusive announcement I'd like to make today is that we are launching a very big program which uh, comes off of the huge success that we had of this special program, the uh, interview with uh, Jose Manuel Barroso working with YouTube. So thanks to Google Plus and Google Hangouts, uh, we were able to have this live interview with Mr. Barroso and have a dialogue between him and European citizens uh, live, a bit like something that was, was done with uh, Barack Obama uh, recently. And this was such a success, this first experience, that we are working with different our different partners at Google and YouTube, who are also here with us today or connected to us here today. We're looking at ways to try to set a monthly appointment, a monthly date uh, to uh, put leading figures in direct contact uh, through uh, Google Plus and Google Hangouts uh, to have a dialogue with citizens. Uh, we are also working uh, very hard to improve our coverage of late breaking news. As Lucien said, we are trying to be present uh, absolutely everywhere where news is happening. And I would like to welcome Farouk Atigue, who is one of our great reporters, who has just returned from Aleppo, uh, where he filmed, he brought back uh, exclusive images. Uh, uh, so at uh, 22.45 tonight, CET time tonight, uh, we, you will, there's a 12-minute report from Farouk on Aleppo, and that's on your news alone, of course. Um, now, let's move on to our partnerships. One of our strengths is our ability to generate, uh, build partnerships around the world. Uh, so who else uh, has such partnerships. Look at these. We are very proud to announce our new partnership with ABC News to cover uh, the U.S. presidential elections, working with the big names, the well-known uh, Christian Amanpour. Another uh, partnership we have ju just signed is with Band News, uh, which is the leading news channel in Brazil. And we have a cooperation agreement there as well. Another important after the U.S. and Brazil is China with Robert Lawrence Kuhn, a specialist of China based in uh, Beijing, who will be working with us from China Matters. Uh, and I'm also delighted to announce that we are on the point of signing a very important uh, partnership with La Repubblica, the uh, leading uh, newspaper of Italy. So we are also launching Your News Network. Now, what is Your News Network? It is one of the most ambitious projects in our, our lineup. The idea is to put together the biggest network of cooperation of media groups in the world so that the uh, members can take advantage of our experience, our content, our uh, brand. So the idea is to integrate here all of our 21 uh, shareholders, and we're already discussing that with them. And we already have three uh, new members who have joined us. The first uh, being Iktimai TV, who is joined us, uh, joining us in Baku, which is the national broadcaster, the public broadcaster of Azerbaijan. Then we have Mongolia, MNB. They pick up your news six times a day on their terrestrial relay. And finally, Face TV of Bosnia-Herzegovina that we have just signed an agreement with. So now, after all of that incredibly dense information, I'd like to give you a brief break here to make a non-announcement. Though we have partnerships all over the world, as you've seen, there is one partner, uh, a hugely important area that is not a uh, part of the partner, and that is Germany. 20 years since we created, we still have no contact, no cooperation with Germany. And though we are we are connected with Berlin right now, so we would like to take advantage of this opportunity to send out to declare our passion for Germany. I hope they're paying attention. 
Uh, so, I hope they've heard that. Uh, so, uh, so, will you marry me? Now, obviously, ZDF and ARD would be our most logical partners, and we would love to do something with them. And uh, there have been some discussions with ZDF, and we uh, thank them for hosting our conference there uh, today. Well, we would like to uh, marry you, as we've said, but uh, we are anyway moving forward with a very pragmatic approach. And we believe that the 50th anniversary of the Franco-German Treaty would be an excellent opportunity to uh, reignite that flame and our hopes. Uh, Coming back to our different human needs, uh, fairly briefly, I'll talk to you about creativity. Creativity is the human need to innovate and build and create. Uh, and so for the media, the question is how to capture and maintain our audiences. And now two quick announcements here. The first is that we're going to completely revise our on-screen uh, look for early 2013 for our 20th anniversary. Uh, we're getting a facelift, if you will. So we're working with different uh, agencies. You can see the old, uh, these are the old logos if you, that you see on the screen here. These are the, we're working with uh, the top creative agencies who are making proposals uh, and we'll be choosing an agency in the coming days. Uh, so we want to integrate this notion of integrating the different uh, user experiences that we've been talking to you about. And so we really want to implement the multilingualism in the new on-screen look. Um, now, this second important information uh, here is to impose our brand where we're not expected. And we're starting to develop a new strategy uh, for product placement because increasingly, Euronews is participating in different fictions, be it uh, programs, be it for the cinema or television, where the Euronews brand could be integrated in the uh, scenario. Here's an ex a recent example, uh, Spiral. Uh, which is broadcast around Europe, including Arte in France, uh, where Euronews appears in the uh, show. And we have uh, other ideas. Uh, there's a film with Danny Boone on the Icelandic uh, volcano. Uh, forgive me for not pronouncing the name of that volcano. Uh, and so for us, we want to continue along these ways to uh, have a presence and perhaps one day in a James Bond movie. So that was the brief moment. That was, that was your break. Now we'll move on is that uh, move on to the next human need is connection. So to engage with and interact with each other. How, so for a news media, how can we do that, provide the contact and be connected? Uh, so we have several important announcements in this category. We're already very present on smart TVs, you know, those uh, internet connected televisions. It's like the smartphone. And we have developed uh, dozens and dozens of applications. And so we're happy to inform you today that 95% uh, of manufacturers, television manufacturers, you know, Samsung, uh, Sony, Panasonic, et cetera, and recently Google TV have a Euronews app. Second announcement, we have uh, just signed an innovative uh, partnership with Renault. A car maker, and this was announced at the uh, recent uh, Paris Car Show. And we have joined their R-Link system in all new Renault cars. There's on the dashboard, you've got different applications which will allow you, when the car stops, you can read news flashes. Uh, and there's also a new application that uh, transcribes, that uh, transforms uh, Bo uh, text to voice when you start driving. So that's a very interesting application. So we're also uh, developing the uh, universal iPad, iPhone apps. This is available uh, from the Apple Store starting today, the new version of that. Uh, you can, and because we're always thinking about that user experience, we've developed two new tools which are. Uh, 
are will make use of the app uh, entertaining or fun. There there will be weekly quizzes, for example, to test uh, if you've been your knowledge of the news. So, and for each news item, uh, each news story, or on the website, you can also say if th if this is good news or bad news. You can vote on it because we. As we've said, we always feel that uh, we should welcome all different opinions and perspectives. Uh, so this application is being developed uh, for iPad. It is an additional app for iPad. Uh, there are two different ways to use it on the iPad, either uh, in complement and supplement to your computer in the rational display, we call it, uh, like the internet, or as uh, an additional device with a more creative presentation, more fun usage, and you can tilt your iPad. Uh, so depending if you use a vertical or horizontal layout, you get a different uh, usage of the app. And another thing that we're uh, announcing today, and I'm very proud of this, is Your News Radio. We're launching it all over the world, though, a web radio station that will allow you to he hear the uh, news every 15 minutes in the morning, every 30 minutes in the rest of the day. And what's specific here is that there'll be some music here. Again, we're thinking about the user experience because in this mode of consumption of news, uh, the there should be a combination. The music will represent no more than 30% of the radio program. And here's an excerpt of that. It is 9 a.m. in London, 8 a.m. in Paris, and 3 p.m. in Shanghai. Euro News Radio, the news. More anti American protests are expected after Friday prayers, while France braces itself against Muslim anger. So the radio will first come out in six languages English, German, Spanish, French, Italian, and Russian. And then the other languages will be added little by little. This will be available uh, from uh, yournewsradio.com. And we have uh, agreements signed with major radio platforms. And here you can see the names VTuner and TuneIn are huge radio platforms in the U.S. Uh, with uh, Orange Live Radio, uh, German Radio, etc. And so this means that we can also be heard in radios, on smart TVs, on PCs and uh, tablets, and pure audio uh, systems using these platforms. Uh, so I already talked to you about the uh, iPhone and iPad uh, apps. So this will be accessible. This means that your news has more apps than any other uh, news media, all available via the App Store. Now, what about our final need, that fifth element, which we feel to be specific to your news, and that is the question of belonging. As I said in the beginning, we want to help build this sense of belonging in Europe, a sense of community. Now, as you know, uh, right now, uh, the feeling of belonging is not very strong. If you look at surveys in recent times, if we look at some of the recent figures in France, for example, the Figaro did a uh, survey recently for the 20th anniversary of Maastricht and asked the French, what is your feeling of belonging? 40% felt that they belonged to France, 30% their city, 23% their region, and only 7% said Europe as a first response. Now, in Germany, the these surveys, 65% said they see themselves outside of Europe, and 49% who do not want to be in the European Union. So uh, we're off to a bad start here, or at least the road ahead is going to be difficult. Uh, so, as I said, part of our mission is to help build this European identity. So, uh, let me make uh, announce three initiatives that were taken this direction. First of all, this is one of the most ambitious such project we're working on, and that is known as Gen Europe. So, Generation Europe. 
the idea here is, is to build an internet platform which would be a bit like Wikipedia, Facebook, Second Life, all about Europe. So we will start entering information that people can contribute and people can consult uh, with questions about uh, the European institutions, just to give an example. And we want this to uh, this to be open for people to contribute or uh, put together uh, quizzes and then organize debates, surveys. So, for example, who, in your opinion, is the uh, key European leader? These, uh, so that could be an interesting survey, and we and we believe that Euronews has a role to play here, and and perhaps to recreate this European public service can be created in a virtual uh, manner. So, for example, if you want to uh, enroll, if you are one of your children wants to go to school in London, then you can go through Gen Europe uh, to uh, find housing for uh, your young student. Um, so, and we're working with partners to develop this kind of uh, message board or service. Uh, and we're also announcing a new brand, which is Euronews Talents. This project is to use the Euronews network to go out and identify talent, seek out talent and select them and use our network to make them better known, to promote them. Uh, so we have two big partnerships uh, that we're developing. Uh, we have, the first is with Google, and we've launched the Euronews Business Awards, partnering with Google to identify leaders in e-business. Uh, so companies can uh, send in a short video to tell us about themselves, and then there's a jury who picks the winners in different categories, and then they are shown on the uh, channel. This is tw let me show you a short 20-second video to explain this competition. Why not tell us about it? The Euro News Business Awards is your chance to share your story and promote your business. Create a short, simple video, up to one minute, showing how your business is succeeding on the web. And enter the category that best suits your story. Our three winners will have their business showcased on your own use, receive training from Google experts, and win some great prizes. Terms and conditions apply. To find out more and submit your video, check out youtube.com slash Business by September 23rd. Voilà, et donc dernière annonce. And final initiative I wanted to announce to you today uh, with our friends at uh, Pschent uh, Music uh, Publisher, who are present here with us today, so a music production company. We want to uh, launch uh, something of a competition called Music Talents, so Muir News Music Talent, EMT, on the same model. And we've asked uh, new generation music groups to send in their demos, uh, and with the jury we will select the best. Uh, and what's interesting here is uh, that we will introduce them to the public and we will put together compilation discs, in fact, so it'll be known as Eurovibes, uh, uh, to turn the spotlight on all that European talent out there in the music world. Uh, so we're going to, uh, we had some fun uh, putting this together, and our first compilation will be going out on all of our different uh, platforms, and including iTunes. So it's a selection of some 15 groups, European groups. Uh, and here you see them on the screen, and we'll have you listen to uh, a brief promotion of this new initiative. Uh, Euronews has chosen some of the best new music in Europe for you. Eurovibes, a unique selection featuring Slove, Disco D, Who Made Who. Trenta Muller, Junking, John Talabot, Sashian, Finley Brown, Tesla Boy, 
Prince Manus, Martin Dawson, Oliver Koletsky, Le Grand Popo Football Club, Tristesse Contemporaine. Discover new sounds, new vibes from Europe. Discover Euro vibes. Available now on iTunes Store and most digital music platforms. Voilà, j'en profite juste pour dire pour les. So for music lovers, uh, we're happy to have Tristesse Contemporain who are with us, and they'll be doing a very brief performance. If you're still with us uh, after uh, the press conference, so my conclusion. In 27 seconds uh, flat, there was a lot we wanted to say to you today, so I think you can understand why we decide to put together this press conference. So the conclusion, coming back to the beginning, is the only question that really matters is how to survive and thrive in this media environment. Uh, I think now you can make your own opinion of how we're doing. And so now we'll take...